Okay. We're going to be doing the secant of theta right now, which is basically y equals 1 over the cosine of theta. And what I did was I made myself a basic table from 0 to 2 pi. You can continue going in one direction, you can continue going in another direction. But basically what you have to realize is that it's going to be periodic. So after 1 comes root 2 over 2, after root 2 over 2 comes 0, after 0 comes negative root 2 over 2, etc. So after 1, without even looking at this, is going to be root 2 over 2, and after root 2 over 2 is going to be 0. It's going to repeat itself over and over once you find its period. And its period is 2 pi, that means when it repeats again. So all you really got to do is write a period down, and then once you figure that out, then just you can go in either direction. So before 1 is going to be root 2 over 2, and before root 2 over 2 is 0. It's just something that repeats. And that's the pattern. Uh, from 1 to 1. So I'm going to try to figure this out and I've already got the cosine graph here. I actually have it from more than 0 to 2 pi. 0 to 2 pi is right here but I just wanted to extend it a little bit further so you can see the end of this you know, little hump of sorts, this uh, protruding aspect of the graph and I kind of wanted to complete it here because it helps me get a better idea of um, the secant graph, specifically the vertical asymptotes. So I'm looking at this bad boy, and technically speaking, when I'm doing this problem uh, for the secant, when I want to flip the values, it's pretty important to just put 0 over 1. I said that before for the uh, co-secant, but it just helps students. Okay, so let's look at the important values before we look at these ones. Well, they're not, they're all important, but, you know. So when I flip 1, or 1 over 1, it's just 1. When I flip 0 over 1, it's 1 over 0, which is undefined. When I flip negative 1, it's negative 1 over 1, which is 1 over negative 1. It's still the same result. I flip this bad boy, it's undefined. I flip 1 over 1, and it's 1. When I flip the root 2's over 2, I already went ahead and did it. You get 2 over root 2. You get 2 over root 2. Rationalize the denominator. Make sure that there's no uh, radical. So you get this over this. Those cross out. And for each of these, you're going to get a root 2, which comes out to about 1.414. So I go ahead and I do that. I'm not looking at the positive or the negative of it yet. And somebody says, well, isn't that wrong? No, it's not. There's a negative, bam. There's a negative, bam. All done. So I want to graph it, and I want to figure out what I have to do in order to, you know, figure out, like, you know, kind of what the secant looks like. I'm going to go ahead and tell you what I told you for the cosecant. Uh, when I'm graphing the secant, with, uh, when I'm graphing the secant, pardon me, I graph a cosine graph first. And then I do a secant, or when I was younger, and when I was taking the class, I would do that. And then I would just erase the cosine afterwards. When I'm graphing the cosecant, I would graph a sine graph, and then just plot the um, see a cosecant graph. Same thing here. If I want to graph the secant, I, I really don't need to look at these values. All I really need to do is say, okay, whenever it hits zero for the cosine, that means it's one over zero for the secant. Excuse me, secant. So that means that's where it's undefined. So what's really important is to draw your vertical asymptotes. And you draw your vertical asymptotes wherever the cosine is zero. And then what I would do is I'd say, okay, at its maximum point is the minimum point, at its minimum point is the maximum point, and its maximum point is the minimum point. What do you mean? Of the, um, well actually technically it's a relative uh, minimum, not uh, the minimum point. Anyways, back to what I was going to say. So when I'm doing this, I'm like, oh, okay. Uh, so it's, it starts here, but this is going to be the minimum of the curve, and it's a vertical asymptote, so it's going to stretch out. Now some students say, ah, oh, you know what, I don't think you can just do that. Oh, no, 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 no. Trust me, I can. Uh, at pi over 4, it's root 2, which is uh, 1.414, so it's right here. And at 0, it's undefined. I didn't write a value for the table here, but I assure you it's also 1.414. Well, technically, it's... Uh, 7 pi over 4, or negative pi over 4, which is the same thing. So it goes like that. That's all you really do when you're doing the uh, secant or the cosecant graphs. Just draw yourself a sine and then figure out the cosecant. Draw yourself a cosine and figure out the secant. Yeah, I, mean, I think I said that right. So here it's negative uh, 1.414, negative 1.414, and it just extends down. That's all there is to it. This one goes like this and goes like this. When I teach my students, I don't all, I show them this, I show them how to figure it out with the table, but then I say, if you're just graphing a parent function, just do it like this. And then when you manipulate the period, the amplitude, phase shift, or vertical shift, then you got to be more careful, clearly. Then you have to actually plug it into your table. But in terms of just graphing a regular secant graph, that's what you do. Now, I know I neglected this, so I'll go ahead and say this. 
The period of this graph is 2 pi. The period of the cosecant graph is also 2 pi. So let me go ahead and write that down first. Period equals 2 pi. It's basically where the graph hits the same spot and repeats. So here's where it hits the same spot and here's where it hits the same spot, but it's got to be going in the same direction. It's going up, going up. How far is this from this? 2 pi radians away or 360 degrees away. Bam. Finito. The range is actually considerably easier to figure out, so we'll do the range first. And a lot of books like doing the union thing, so I, I don't mind. The range is from the lowest y value to the highest y value. That's from negative infinity. Now, I don't put negative infinity to infinity in this case because there's actually a whole uh, section missing, so I don't do that. That would be irresponsible. I go from negative infinity to 1, and it actually includes 1. And then I write something called union because books, a lot of books do it too. And it goes from, oops, pardon me, my mistake, negative infinity to negative 1. That's a negative 1, not a 1. And then it goes from 1 to infinity. Now, since it never touches, you put a, uh, a, a circular bracket as opposed to a square bracket. If it includes a number, it's a square bracket. The domain, this one's actually pretty tricky. But here's what I just do for most of the time in the domain. I go negative infinity to infinity, but does not include, and I think different books write it differently. No, whatever. It does not include values like uh, negative pi over 2, or pi over 2, or 3 pi over 2, or, um, well, let's see, yeah, pretty much it. You know, it, every time it hits uh, 90 degrees, or 270 degrees, or negative 90 degrees, or negative 270 degrees, Basically, whenever it hits uh, this axis right here, it's undefined. That's pretty much all there is to that. Now, how do I write that down? Well, I'm saying, okay, um, okay, it doesn't hit pi over 2, but I have to account for all of the values, like pi over 2, 3 pi over 2, 5 pi over 2, 7 pi over 2, 9 pi over 2, etc. Well, how do I write that? Well, every time it doesn't occur, it doesn't hit at uh, pi values plus that. So it doesn't hit at 90 degrees, and then if I add pi, it doesn't hit. And then if I add another pi, it doesn't hit. And if I add another pi or 180 degrees, it does not hit. And if I add another 180 degrees, well, how do I write that? Well, I say it's pi over 2 plus pi n. Now, this is what's really interesting. Let's say uh, n is 0. And n stands for an integer. Negative 1, negative 2, negative 3, negative 4, 0, 1, 2, 3, 4. That's all n stands for, where n is an integer. Um, let's say n is 0. Okay, 0 times pi is 0, uh, plus pi over 2, okay, does not hit there. Let's say n is 1, because it can only be an integer. Uh, 1 times pi is pi, pi plus pi over 2, uh, that's 2 pi over 2 plus 1 pi over 2 is 3 pi over 2, bam! Okay, let's say n is 2, so that's 2 pi plus pi over 2, that's 4 pi over 2 plus 1 pi over 2, that's 5 pi over 2, bam! So on and so forth. That math is actually pretty tricky, and I don't actually expect my students to remember that off the top of their head. So what I tell them to do is I say, okay, just figure it out slowly. Here's where it doesn't hit. It doesn't hit at uh, pi over 2. Okay. Now, if I keep adding 180 degrees, or if I keep adding pi, it's not going to hit. But I can't say pi over 2 plus pi, then pi over 2 plus 2 pi, then pi over 2 plus 3 pi. It's, it's just not proper. It, it's not an efficient way to write it. So I say, you know, you got to have an N. And we say n stands for an integer. That's a complicated aspect, though. I don't expect people to get that right away. I don't. It's, it's actually pretty difficult. Uh, but with that said, I hope it was helpful, at least. Uh, have a good day for now. Bye-bye.